Okay, guys, uh, today, inshallah, we're going to continue what we started in uh, this chapter, okay? So, we keep talking about the electron configuration, and we said the electron configuration means this distribution of electrons in the sub-energy level around the nucleus of an atom. And we know that we have four sub-energy levels, which are S, P, D, and F. And we said each principal energy level, the seven energy levels, which start from K to Q, or one, two, three, up to seven in the biggest atom, they already include sub energy levels which you know in SPDF and we said that they are different in their energy and we know how to distribute electrons regarding to the uh, off bow in a low which means that electrons always occupy the uh, lower energy sub energy levels then they pass to the higher one today inshallah we're going to continue so we're going to talk about about uh, orbitals and spinning okay so we said that what are orbitals actually actually science by measuring the density uh, of or the distribution of electrons around the nucleus, they find that the electrons they are highly possible to found in some places rather than others. So they call these places our orbitals, which already are found inside the sub energy levels, which means that the principal energy level contain sub energy levels which we know already the, which we already know them and within this sub energy levels they are like partitions or uh, last sections uh, small sections we call them orbitals they're actually the where uh, the the part where electrons are found in so here like this we see that each energy sub levels have maybe one orbital or more. So this table represents you the number of orbitals which found in each sub energy level. So here like this we find that the orbital S contain just one, uh, the sorry, sub energy level S contain just one orbital, B contain three orbitals, D contain five orbitals, and F contain seven orbitals. And here there is a rule that each orbital just carry two electrons or could be filled by two electrons. That's why we find that the sub energy level S is filled by two, sub energy level six, uh, B is filled by six, D 10, and the uh, F14, as we know. So these number, okay, which we already used during the electron distribution or electron configuration, we just not like number without no reason. The reason that regarding to the number of orbitals of each sub-energy level. So because sub-energy level S contains just one orbital, so it could be filled by two electrons only. Okay, here it contains three orbital, and each orbital could be filled by two. So two multiply three, that equals six, and D contains five orbitals, and each one could be filled by two. So five multiplied to equal 10 and so on. So here like this, we know the reason of the number of electrons that could be found in each sub energy levels that due to the number of orbitals. So here we're gonna find that there is something important here. Something we could that the poly exclusion principle. What that's here, we said that it states that each orbital may contain no more than two electrons. So each, that's mean each orbital just contain two electrons only, not more than that, maybe less, okay? So here and also it produced that electrons, we know that electrons carry negative charge, okay? So as they carry negative charge and they are gonna be found in the same orbital, so they of course have a kind of repulsion force because we know that similar charges are rep uh, repel while different charges attract. So they are similar and so they will repel. So to avoid this kind of repulsion, it's preferred first to fill the uh, orbitals by single electron. That's mean, for example, if we have, look with me carefully, for, if we have, for example, that we have sub energy, uh, the sub energy, uh, sub energy level B, it have three orbitals, okay? So let's call them X, Y, and Z. So one will start to make the electron, uh, configuration and we have that orbital B we may fill the by three electrons so first I'm gonna put electron here then another one here then another one here although X could carry two but it's preferred to distribute them as single electrons that to avoid the repulsion force or the energy which needed to overcome the repulsion force between the two electrons so better to hope them put them as a single electron in each orbital. But once we are gonna have four electrons, so I'm gonna add one extra here, and five here, and six here. So like this, we find that all filled. So like this, if we not obligated to put them as two in the same so, uh, orbital, it better to put them as single one till the number is more than this. So we start to put them in double way. So here that the idea of this. So as you just find, we find 
once we put two electrons beside each other in the same orbital, we said they were repelled. So to overcome this repel repulsion force, we find that two electrons are spinning in two different directions. That's to make the electric, the electric magnetic field in two opposite directions. So like this, we could overcome the repulsion force between the similar charges. That's why when we put them in the same orbital, we make one spinning in this direction and the other one is spinning in this direction. It means they are already rotating like this while this one rotating like this. So they are rotating in two opposite directions. Okay, so that's here how we could overcome the repulsion force between them. So regarding to these guys, we could find that regarding to this here, this spin diagram, as you can see, the first inch contain two electrons, so they are spinning in two opposite direction and so on like that, okay? So here we find that's represent that way they are uh, uh, rotating to create a magnetic field that already cancel the other one. So like this, we cancel the project force between them. Okay, so then here, we said that. We ask a good question here. We ask when two electrons occupy a sub-level, they could either completely fill the same P orbital or half fill to different P orbital. What does it mean? Here, as we can see, it's fair to make it like this or like this. That's mean I just have two electrons. For example, two, four, six. So here we have the carbon. So uh, carbon, six electrons. It's better to put that last two pair of electrons in the same orbital in the sub energy level or like that. Okay, so actually it's better like that in the beginning. Why? Because here that's saving more energy. So here that's back to a rule we call Hans rule. State that the single electrons occupy all empty orbitals within a sub energy level before they start to form bears. So it's better to put them as single electrons in each orbital, then we start to make bears. So this one is wrong while this one is true. Okay. So here we'll find this one as we said, this is wrong. That is true according to the Hans rules. Okay. So here back to this point, okay, or again, we're gonna find. So if two electrons enter the same orbital, there is a repulsion for between them as, uh, due to their negative charge. The most stable configuration is with a single electron different orbitals, as we said. So here we are gonna find this also is very important here. The first ionization energy, that's the graph we saw before, okay? In period three shows the general increasing, okay? But as we find here, however, the sulfur value is blue than the phosphorus, okay? We here will find that the sulfur, okay, is blue than the phosphorus, okay? As the highest energy electron of both are in the 3P sub energy, that is evidence of Hohn's rule. That means here, why? Because actually we find that in sulfur, okay, we start to pair electrons. So that means they requires more energy or that's here, they are more energy here while in phosphorus is less. So here that's introduced just a kind of evidence for the Hohn's rule. Okay, so here we said that phosphorus has three electrons in the three, uh, three P levels and sulfur has four. So phosphorus, these three electrons will be single in each orbital while here we're gonna add or pair one electron in the first sub, uh, first orbital, uh, orbital in the sub energy three P. Okay, so that's the difference here guys, okay, as we can see. So here, we find that the electron configuration of chromium and copper are exceptions, the normal rules of orbiting Y here, because actually that will be more saving energy. So we find here in chromium, okay, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, 3d5. Why? Why we didn't put 2 and 4s? We usually say 4s filled by 2, then we add the rest to the 3d. But here that's exclusion, that or exception, that's something different. Why? Because in this case, we're going to find that 4s and 3d, both of them are half filled like this. The, we are saving more energy. So it's better in P in this distribution, okay, rather than the normal one. So this is exception. You must know them and save them in your mind. Copper also the same here. We're going to find in copper, 4s is just filled by 1 while 3D is full, completely filled. So here, supposed to be 4S2 and 3D9, but it's better to have 3D completely filled because here it's more stable. Actually, put it in your mind, that stable or each energy level could be stable if it's not filled at all or even completely filled or half filled. So here like this, all of them are stable because they are completely filled and that's also here, we like this, the, the May, uh, the main energy level three is completely filled, two, six, 10, so 18. And four S here is half filled, so like this, it's per, okay, or that's uh, the best electron configuration that save energy for the uh, 
atom so we for the atom so like this we should memorize this guys okay so here like this guys that's the end of our lesson like this we know okay how we could make the electron configuration of different uh, elements and we know how we could okay uh, make this kind of configuration so next time inshallah we're gonna have uh, like a kind of questions to practice how to make the electron configuration of different uh, elements thank you guys goodbye